People, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning. You know who it is, Arsenio Buck reporting live from Bangkok, baby. Welcome back to the Arsenio Buck Show. Now, you obviously are probably listening to me right now, and you are saying, man, you are speaking really, really, well, you're not very loud today. Well, it's because I'm in a confidential place. Uh, 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 I can't get too loud. Can't get too loud this morning because, again, I am on the go, but I decided, man, I said, man, I really need to keep this run at my everyday podcast going and just schedule one for tomorrow morning whatnot. I don't think I'm going to do one at the airport tomorrow because that's just going to be a pain in the ass. So anyways, with that being said, man, I'm going to be getting into this. Again, thank you for everyone who's actually tuning in to me from around the world. Thank you so much to the Bahamas, Qatar, and a couple of other countries. I think it was Syria and Japan and somewhere else. I forgot what it was. It wasn't Georgia, but it was another place. There's so many different countries out there who listen to me. Thank you so much for your support. And of course, you guys are listening to me because you are trying to look for answers yourself. So chapter three of this specific part, Dale Carnegie, okay, how to influence people, how to win friends. So He said, he said, he who can do this has the whole world with him. He who cannot walks a lonely way. Just imagine this. He was actually going fishing a long time ago. Man, we're talking almost damn near 100 years ago. He was out fishing in Maine one day, and he was thinking about what he wanted. But at the same time, in order to get a fish to bait, you need to think about what the fish is willing to bait on. What are they willing to eat? Because... If you put strawberries or if you put apples or oranges on the other end of the, of of course, on the end end of the hook, are the fish going to eat it? Are you going to be able to bait it? No. You have to think about what the fish wants to eat, right? Just look at it this way from life. A lot of people. There was a British prime minister back during World War I. And he said, you know what, what he has learned, especially throughout his tenure, because, of course, after wars, a lot of people are literally kicked out of office, uh, except, of course, George Bush and stuff. But so many different, you know, prime ministers out there, they get kicked out of office uh, after the war and whatnot. But he, oh, he, you know what, he quoted and he said, why talk about what we want? That is childish, absurd. Of course, you are interested in what you want. You are eternally interested in it. But no one else is. The rest of us are just like you. We are interested in what we want. So the only way on earth to influence other people is to talk about what they want and show them how to get it. Remember that tomorrow when you are trying to get someone to do something. If, you know, for example, if you don't want your children to smoke, don't preach at them. Don't talk about what you want. But show them that cigarettes may keep them from making the basketball team or the football, you know, the track and field team or running the 100-yard dash or doing this or doing that. Think about it from their perspective, from their perspective. See, it's a good th- – this is a good thing to remember regardless of whether you are dealing with children, chimpanzees, crazy people where you live. It doesn't matter, okay? For example, one day Ralph, Ald- Ralph Waldo Emerson and his son – They tried to get a calf, basically a small horse, into the barn, into the stable, but they couldn't. So as much as they kept pulling and pushing and trying to get this calf into the stable, they just could not do it. So there was actually an Irish housemaid a long, long time ago saw the predicament that was actually occurring and whatnot. And it's amazing because this particular person was like, okay, well, I'm going to think from it, think about it from a calf's perspective. I'm going to have them. Or have the calf lick my finger and follow the calf into the barn. She did exactly that. And that was the most amazing thing about it because every act you have ever performed since the day you were born was performed because you wanted something. If you look at it from Andrew Carnegie's perspective a long time ago, okay, the poverty-stricken scotch, okay, he finally, he couldn't even get two cents an hour at some places. But you know what's crazy? He finally gave away $365 million at one moment. He learned early in life that the only way to influence people is to talk in terms of what the other person wants. Okay? He attended school for only four years, yet he learned how to handle people. So it's amazing how these specific people were able to get over the hump. So a lot of people are actually looking at me and staring at me for some reason. So I'm probably going to have to cut this short, but I'm going to keep on pushing until someone gets that knock. If you guys hear a knock, I do apologize. Things are going down around here. But again, 
It's all good. But you know what? I want to talk about it from, just, let's say you get a letter, metaphorically speaking, right? You get a letter on your desk, okay? The letter on the desk says, Mr. John Blank, dear Mr. John, the, the company desires to retain its position in advertising agency leadership in the radio field. And this is what Napoleon Hill actually wrote in his book, and it's so funny. He says, who cares what your company desires? I'm worried about my own problems. I'm worried about the mortgage. I'm worried about the bugs in my houses. I'm worried about all these crazy things that are happening in my life. And yet you have the audacity to come at me with this whippersnapper off in New York yapping about what his company works. Blah, get the hell away from me. Going forward into, of course, the second paragraph of the letter. He said, this agency's national advertising accounts were the bulwark, blah, 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 blah. And then Napoleon Hill went on to write. He said, okay, you're big. You're rich. You're at the top. Are you? So what? I don't give two hoops in Hades about your prestige. And it's so funny. (laughs) He goes on to just go on a rant. And this is how we ultimately dissect uh, these types of letters and stuff like that. So... It's okay. This lady keeps on bugging me. God damn it. Okay, listen, people. I'm going to have to put this on a two part co- podcast and I'm going to have to continue this at another time. I was hoping I could do it here, but apparently not. So, with that being said, people, stay tuned for the next podcast. That one's going to be coming on later on tonight. It is such a pain in the ass to cut, cut it off right now. But you know what? I hope you guys got something out of these seven minutes. Do more. For what influence other people think about it from their perspective. Because if you don't, well then, of course, you're not going to win over them, right? So try it from that way. I'm going to continue this story in my next podcast. And until then, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening. This is your host, Arsenio. Over and out.